Shalom. Islam, y'all. Shalom alaikum alhamdulillah. Allah. Mashallah. Hensalah. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Got another um, audio share this morning. Sorry, welcome back to the channel. The Cheat Code here on YouTube. Evan the Glitch 67 on Instagram. Evan underscore the underscore glitch 67 at Instagram. I do, um, if it's the first time here, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Um, I did pick up a couple, a couple new subscribers. Shout out to Hennon, new Hennon since um, Periscope. We never lost contact through Snapchat, right? It's when I shut down my Periscope account. Shout out to anybody that's here from Periscope, man. Shout out to y'all. Y'all y'all are the base of the people that I deal with pretty much right now. You know, if you've been here since then, um, most of y'all walked through. Well, you didn't know you was walking through the stomach cancer with me. Um, I revealed a lot about the relationship with me and my mom. Most of y'all walked through that. Uh, Jarrell, nephew, Brennan, the younger, but he been here pretty much a long time. And um, most of y'all probably been seeing me change, or what you think is changing ideology, but it's not me changing ideology, it's me practicing Torah, right? Practicing truth, practicing order. And you'll hear me reference Islam, I'll say Shalom, Shalom Aleikum, um, Alhamdulillah, and follow it. I'm like, and that's what I'm going to do because I'm here with the creator, Allah, Jah, Yah, whatever you want to call the deity. My business is with that, and that's not a religious business. It's when y'all see me, I should be a representation of what Allah called me to be, not with wings, not riding on a magic donkey, not walking on water, all these things are children's tales, you know what I'm saying? And they would attract children to the creator. You have the order of, the duty of passing down this order to your children for generation after generation. And y'all can see right now that we don't pass, we don't pass a lot down to our kids that's, that's useful. We pass down ideologies we pass down things that's this that you can't really put your hands on but you can debate all day long back and forth about things so right now while i'm on that I'm, i want to show you that in in real time how it applies to society right because this is what torah is it teaches us to separate um just thoughts and things that won't change anything. And, I, and I, after I play this clip from, again, Dr. Thomas Soul, after I play this clip, I'll, um, I'll show you how it correlates with the scripts and law, right? Because once you can get a man to ponder, he'll stop doing. You know, once somebody's sitting around thinking, if you're thinking about working out, you, I mean, you're not working out. When all you got to do is put your hands on something and move it this way or that way, and the working out has begun. Now, you gonna let a, um, a expert tell you that you need to do 50 curls split up into 10 sets of five. And mind you, that might work, right? But your arms are already nice. It's your stomach is fucked up. So you running with an idea that that's not gonna benefit you anyway. Let me not talk y'all to deaf. Let me put this on real quick. Again, Thomas Soul, if y'all not following him, um, you would do well to follow him, especially if you have young children, because the most important thing is to pass knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to your kids. These things work in the Trinity, and some of it you can't get till you get older without a good guide if you're young enough. So shout out to my son, Kaylin, and I'm going to stand on this. May sound pride, egotistical, but the fact is his foundation that got laid down for him by me was a lot better than the foundation that got laid down for me, from my mom. And, and I confronted her with that too. One of the reasons why we don't speak to this day, but 
you know, I, I was brought up on a whole bunch of ideals, a whole bunch of external shit that never manifested anything. So, you know, let me play this. This of uh, Uncle Thomas, and I'll stop it and then explain how it applies today, right? Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. I'm Peter Robinson. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash new NC knowledge. That's twitter.com forward slash unc knowledge. Dr. Thomas Sowell has taught economics, intellectual history, and social policy at such institutions as Cornell, UCLA, and Amherst. The author of more than a dozen books, Dr. Sowell is now a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. His newest work, Intellectuals and Society. Tom, we'll begin with a quotation. Then candidate Barack Obama in July 2008, quote, it's like these guys, Republicans, take pride in being ignorant. They should go talk to some experts and actually make a difference, experts. close quote. <laughs> well, talking to experts does make a difference. Uh, many of the great disasters of our time have been uh, uh, committed by uh, experts. You, you may remember uh, FDR's brain trust, uh, which according to later studies, uh, prolonged the depression by several years. Uh, the uh, whiz kids in the Pentagon under McNamara, who managed to mess up the, the, the Vietnam War. Uh, you can run through an impressive list of things, of disasters, brought about by people with very high IQ. All right. Segment one, the species of the intellectual. When you refer to intellectuals in intellectuals in society, whom do you mean? I mean people whose end products are ideas. Uh, there are other people, people with great uh, intelligence whose end products are things like the stock vaccine. Uh, there are a research scientist is not necessarily an intellectual. That's right. He, he, an engineer isn't necessarily that's right. an intellectual. That's right. Because the engineer is, is judged by uh, the end product, uh, which is not simply ideas. If he builds a building that collapses, it doesn't matter how brilliant his, his idea was, uh, he's ruined. Uh, conversely, if an intellectual who's brilliant has an, has an idea for rearranging society, and that ends in disaster, he pays no price at all. I see. That makes sense to y'all? When I talk about consequential and non-consequential knowledge, you had, um, and you still have, <clears throat> the president, the person that 81 million Americans supposedly voted for because the election wasn't fixed. You got a president and his group of people that's pushing for climate control. That's something that they're running on. That's idea. It's something that you can't put your fingers on. It's actually a lie. It's fake. It's false. But as long as they know that you can't prove it, they can push that. It's no end result with that. It's just them saying, they're experts saying, yeah, now it's different. And you should be able to see that a lot clearer now, right? And, and the climate that you live in now. <clears throat> and it's all about the people that's before you. And a lot of your moms, a lot of your dads, a lot of your grandmoms, most of them played the role in this. As sure as I played the role in it up until, up until I read what the creator has said for us to do. Not, not, <clears throat> and it's not even a, A wish list is no prayers that I can pray to Allah to get any more than what I'm supposed to have. Now, I can pervert it by acting perversely and out of order. And basically, the creator saying, stand in line. You know what I'm saying? Have patience. If you stand in this line, when you get up to the gate, we got all this stuff for you. The problem is you standing in line, having the patience to stand in line, being distracted by a line that you think is moving faster. And you see outside these lines, some people run up and they come out, they come out real fast, holding a, a gang of shit, running with a gang of shit that they can't see where they're going. If it's going to be a hole in front of them. And in that lane, in that lane, you get a gang of shit, but it's a lot more stuff that you got to deal with in that lane, which doesn't end up in being the peace that our creator promised us. You know what I'm saying? That line over there that's trying to give you what the creator got, 
you pay way more. It's way more pearl in that line than it is over here. This line is guaranteed. I'm walking in it myself. And once I wasn't available for the pitch that that line was making, I see the fucking foolery in that line. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing people killing, robbing, stealing for these goods that I'm going to have without the silver, without the gold casing. I'm going to have a home. I'm going to eat. I'm going to have a, a motor vehicle. And most most of all, and most important, I have a helpmate to make sure that I'm who I'm supposed to be in the creator. That's another thing that I don't see. Um, that's foolishness to me, how men and women talk shit about relationships. Like, who the fuck are y'all to say what the other one is supposed to do by your own merit? Who are you? What do you merit? How do you say what a good man or a good woman is? Where do you get that narrative from? What are you comparing it to? Your last boyfriend? Because this, yo, look. All these things are uh, idolatries of your heart. It's something that you have in your mind that you think it's supposed to be, but did you compare that to what Allah said? Like, not to your caliphate, your imam, your your grand moffat, your rabbi, your priest. All these are men, and those titles mean nothing to me. Again, I tell people, don't accept the parameters that man give you. Your parameters are given to you by the creator. You might, more times than not, you are. The potential for people that you have over you is way more because they're going to give you something. They have to give you something to, to keep you in on what they're saying, right? This is the serpent tree. You know, people was focused on, could that snake walk? Could that snake talk? And I got to admit, for a while, I was on my best shit to um, to prove that a snake could talk. <laughs> for real. Me perverting the creator. Trying to make up a lie for God, right? Because my understanding wasn't where it should have been. So I'm looking at skeletons of snakes saying, that, Yo, they used to have legs so they could stand up. It was a curse for them not to stand up and eat dust. That's why they had to eat dust because they had no business talking, saying what they was going to say. And that's childish. These are these things. It's no serpent. You know, we can say whatever we want to say, but you liken man to a whole bunch of creatures and a whole bunch of different demigods, right? Y'all did Zeus, Hercules, um, all these fucking deities. And these are from the Greek tongue again. So this creation story and the beginning of the scripts, it's been... It's been doctored as well. It's been redacted, edited. But me, like what Thomas Soul was talking about, the end result is what? And then the end result is a it's an order that the creator want for me and you to operate under, right? So you're looking at a serpent talking. The the contra what is it? The attribute of a serpent or a snake is a forked tongue, right? Forked tongue is two sides. So you're speaking out both sides of your mouth, right? You're not so much telling a lie over here, but you finish it off with a lie. You're pulling somebody in. And that conversation was, if you eat from that tree, you will not die. Now, in the context of what that serpent was mentioning death in, like, it was conflation. Like, no, you, your heart not going to stop beating. You will not go on the ground that moment. That was the truth. But the backside was that serpent knew exactly what the creator meant by saying die. And and that word was changed. You see in the Bible, if you're intimate with it, that's up to y'all. You know, I can tell you that I am and I can prove that I am by, by the scriptures or the GPS and the mapping that I keep. Right. So in those scripts, it's a lot of instances where they say cut off from the living. You will be cut off from the living. Cut off from the living. If you're not living, you what? Dead? Okay, so excommunicated from what you've been, where have you been, what you've been around your whole life. That's that's truly a death. In the story of Hagar, she got cut off, right? But as the narrative goes, the creator had a conversation where I was like, oh, no, you're going to be all right. You That's significant because that's telling you that being cut off is is some bad shit. So 
today. People get scarlet marks or cut to shame them in their societies. You understand? And that's being cut off from the living. You you no longer have the rights of the village or the tribe that you and cut off from the living. So this is what that that is that part is for. And what what happened to them? Did they get kicked out of paradise, what you call it? They were cut off from the living. That's where the living was. That was what the creator gave these two specific people. So that story is not about a snake talking or trying to figure out could a snake walk or talk. This is the Hebrew Israelite camp. You know, one of the reasons why I got out of there and why I'm not a ashamed to say Shalom Alekum, um, Alhamdulillah. I do appreciate Islam and I understand exactly what it is. It's about you mastering yourself, but not through some carpet riding Muhammad, not, not, you know, the, the religion of praying five times a day, the tradition of that, I stay with the creator on my mind, you know, in this society, there's no way that I could do business if I didn't know that all this shit was going to fail. Shout out to everybody that's been with me for a while. And when I start talking about 2024, I didn't know it was going to come about the way it's coming about now, but I can see the hand of the creator on all this because I'm intimate with the history of how he dealt with society. And one of the reasons, same kind of reason I got out of the Hebraic mind state, the black mind state, that's that's not of our creator. And again, man gave you all these sidebar memberships. Call them what he want to call them. By identification, I get it. This is the tribe of this. This is the tribe of that. That's wonderful. This is these people, that people. Just to identify you. I'll call you that. Black, white, I'll call you that as I identify it. That's it, because that's what you understand. But that's not who you are entitled. You know, I don't give a fuck about blacks, whites, Jews, dykes, gays, fags. Don't care. That title, that's something that's, that's here. I can't put my hands on it. I can't crush it. And it won't be a shield for you, from me, from the creator. All of you gonna dance to that fucking music no matter what you call yourself. The creator, shout out the nephew. Nephew Jarrell, love you, man. A verse, a verse that's, that should support what I'm saying. Jeremiah 23. Can't hide. The title, the title won't, won't shield you. It's not a mustache. It's not a long nose and glasses. Shout out to nephew Jeremiah 23 and 24. If a man enters a hiding place, did I not see him, says the Lord? For I feel both heaven and earth. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy falsely in my name. I had a dream. I had a dream. Listen, how long will it be uh, in the minds of the prophet who prophesies falsely, the prophets of their own deceitful minds, the plan to make my people forget my name by means of the dream which they tell each other, just as their fathers forgot my name because of Baal? It's a GPS, and I never knew that verse was in there, right? My nephew sent me that verse. Shout out to Jarrell. We all the same. You know, that's in his intimacy. Now it's my intimacy. This is the village. This is the common unity. That is our creator. And what I share is for y'all to use in y'all daily. Like, I appreciate Rel showing me that. Now I can reference that. You can't hide from God. Y'all want to say your arms is too short to box with God? You can't hide. There's no hiding place. I don't need a fancy saying, right? Yeah, boy, your arms too short to box with God. Why y'all st still trying to box them then? When you get sick, why you go get medicine from the doctor to try to box God? If he coming for you, there's no hiding place. Do you understand how to walk in the divinity when you trust wholly? And it's not even trust at this point because you can't hide from him. <laughs> Do you not understand that verse? Like you can't hide. You can't hide with your doctor. You can't hide in the house. One week, I think I mentioned this, not that long ago, 
and two separate incidents. Two two-year-olds in the same same week shot and killed their parents. One girl was on a Zoom. Um, the other one, the dad, son went in the back, shot him in the back and killed him. They weren't out doing anything per you and me. Um, they were with their kids, parents, their kids had to see them die in front of them. Now, this goes into poverty, this goes into systemic racism, this goes into a whole bunch of lies that man made up, double talking, but at the end of all of it, it's the order to create it, y'all. Like, it's order. And because we sympathetic to to the fetishes of men like Christmas, Easter. These are all our fetishes. And they fetishes because it's not something that the creator deemed that we should do. We actually spoke against all of it. But you live in a society that pushes that. You're socialized to be against God. And when it's a choice, like what's happening now, when it's a choice, you made choices your whole life to openly do that. All of us have. And God punished us openly. Like whatever calamity came in your life, you deserving of it because... You set up rules off of what you think is proper. And none of us are proper. It's something in our minds. I have fetishes too. That if I was the ruler and I didn't have God's law with me, I would set up society based off who I am. Deuteronomy 17 said, you can pick a king to rule over yourself, but make sure you have a copy of these laws. So when he rule, he don't rule to the left or to the right. Just right down the middle. And it said a king shouldn't have multiple wives too. So what's up, kings? All y'all kings out there, the word of God say refrain from that. You know, no multiple wives. All you sisters, that's that's poly, poly. Look, that's not the word of God. That's some man wanting a lot of ass. And you sisters trying to stay in line with that, I get it. But these niggas whack as shit. It's one one man, one man for all of us to complete us. That's why our marriages are failed. And you might not be the person you need to be to catch that person at the time. So the sooner you get your shit together, the sooner you'll see that person for you. No half person is going to be able to pick it out. And by your own attributes, your own socialization, which you gravitate towards is going to be that person that you pull in. No more, no less. And most times, lady, when you see your mate, you're always talking about he ain't shit. He's a reflection of you at any given fucking time. The man that you dating is who you are. And you think that being pretty and being sexy is a is, is something that's, there's no value in that unless you're a whore. You know what I'm saying? After sex, then what, what are you? So when, what y'all consider good traits of what you are as a good woman, you better check that out with... Allah, right? And I was speaking to Sister Maria Mali and two sisters, listen, dressing like women and being sexy, well, that's acceptable. You know, y'all have curves, y'all have breasts, and you can't hide that, and you shouldn't. And that keeps men in a heterosexual mind state. So when you seeing men, men, transgender, starting to try to become what the creator made natural, that's an abomination, and the fuck is wrong with y'all? Y'all gonna hold women to, to not looking like whores in, in a society where, where you got men. Shout out to Darius, what that motherfucking name is, Eddie Winslow. Doing, doing men that's looking like women. And you better not say anything about it, because the LGBT, queer, freak nation fags, Gonna shut you down in one nation under God. I know a lesbian, transgender, whatever motherfucker that ever heard me is afraid to see one thing around me. They need to be because their whole life is an abomination. And I'm not going to chase you down with this fag finder. But if you make the mistake of saying something to me, I'm going to curse you on God to what he said, not to what I'm saying. And that's all we call to be as a representative of the will of the creator to the point where you look like you fucking crazy, or you outcasted, or you look like this nigga building an ark. Y'all understand that story? It was to make him look fucking outrageous. But still, in all of that, he's like, fuck y'all, a storm coming. Today, I say, fuck y'all, a storm coming. Now, go ahead and talk shit, LBGT. 
It's almost 2024, right? I've never been aware of politics and the policies of the land, and I still don't care about it. But I follow it now to see the hand of the creator moving across the people like he always did in the book. What's wrong now is the creator don't mind you choosing evil because he got something for your evil last. I'm going to show you about that in a second. So his will going to be done and his will is for us to do good. But it's also his will to punish the fuck out of those that do bad. You see what's happening in society right now? You you have a free will to do bad and to do good. Once the government is forcing your hand on how you act, the creator is going to interact. So now all this shit is unraveling, but it had to be brought to the forefront at such a number, at a level that even the dummies had to see it. By dummies, I mean sheep. Even you dummies that voted for Joe Biden understand now. And now you won't be so fast to run out to them polls until you understand everything. But look what did it, y'all. It was the children. It was the innocent that snapped these motherfuckers out of it. And by this election in Virginia, which is traditionally a blue state like Maryland, the people said, fuck all y'all titles, right? And they came together for children. The, the next generation, it snapped everybody out of it. And they said leading the charge in this turnaround was white moms that were non-college graduates, right? The white moms as college graduates, they were actually voting for Joe Biden and it, and it spoke in volumes because they don't give a fuck about children. They don't need to. They gave a fuck about their careers. And... That group, which is regular American people, one nation under God, that snapped them out of it. A lot of us have that film over us that was put on us. This how, just how we came. It's how we wired. None of us will ever speak out against it because it's tradition, right? You pray five times a day. Muhammad was the man. Jesus walked on water, blah, blah, blah. Because it's never been stepped to you before. And you don't think that you're big enough to step to it. And the people that give you your parameters, your policies, you see them in office right now. This has been the case forever. So there's people that are saying, y'all pray five times a day. That was a man deciding that one day. Our relationship with our lives not predicated on the number of times we pray a day. It's almost silly when you think about the shit, but once you let your grandmom, your great granddad, whoever put their hands on it, I don't know what kind of person your great granddad was. I know what kind of person mine was. My grandfather was a fucked up nigga. And the title of granddad does not change that. So again, idolatries of your heart. That title means nothing to God. Our creator didn't. When you was born, was you born granddad? Was you born mom, dad? No, you was a fucking human being. And that's what you answer to. Elders. You know, elders. Didn't didn't have a, a rule for grandmom, grandpa. Said elders, right? Men, women, Issa, Nisa. This is how y'all have behaved. But for me, this is what I can call y'all and to account for these things. Keep these things, do these things, and we'll be cool, right? So before the event of Jesus, before the event of Muhammad, it was no way for people to secure a relationship with Allah, even after they had messed up. Say somebody was trying to do well, and they just fucked up. How do you get back to the creator? Have you ever learned? What's, how do you do that in Islam? You ask for forgiveness. Um, First Kings 8. This is King Solomon, right? And King Solomon, he play a lot of roles in the script. One, they say he was the wisest man ever. They give him all these accolades, how wise he was, how rich he was. And in the end, he ended up being a idolater, right? Making a covenant with other nations. Having more women than anybody in the world, Deuteronomy 17 says, don't do this. Don't have 
that many wives rule off the, the word of God. You wasn't supposed to marry women of other nations. Y'all understand what that mean? Let me let me give y'all the checkers of that. Other nations. Your nation is predicated off your deity. If any woman of a of another nation, of another deity, wanted to come over and, and serve the one God, you could marry her. It wasn't like, oh, I have to kill that bitch. It, no color mattered because they did do color. You did nations, your nationality, wherever you were, whatever land mass you were in, whatever deity that you was following, that was your tradition, that was your tribe, that was your common unity. If a woman moved from another land mass to where you were, if she was interested in you, what comes with you as a man is monotheism. If she in turn wanted to, to take that, then you could deal with her. You know what I'm saying? But Solomon, that wasn't the case with Solomon. Solomon took on, he took on other women's cultures and started doing sorcery and shit like that, right? King Solomon. But before all of that, Solomon called all of Israel together and gave them instructions per God. The first temple that was built, King Solomon. That's this conversation. Did God want King Solomon to build a temple? No, he wanted David to do it, but David's hands was too bloody. So this temple that Solomon was building was in honor of the Most High. For the Most High to dwell in um, if he was to come to the land. It wasn't for people. This temple was a representation of the tent of meeting that Moses and Joshua spoke to the Creator. And Moses and Joshua Levitical priests. They were the only ones that were allowed there. So that tradition continued in the temple that Solomon was building. Only the Levitical priests. So let me read from that, y'all. And this is why I read. Not to say in Jeremiah 7 and 19, it said, Lord, oh Lord, Lord, oh Lord. First Kings 8. I start from the beginning. And then I'll go down a little bit, and then I'm going to jump to one of the, the parts that's pivotal in the bullshit story of Jesus. Then Solomon convoked the, call, the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, the ancestral chieftains of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of Covenant, of the Lord from the city of David. That is Zion. All the men of Israel gathered before King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim. That is the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had come, the priests lifted the ark and carried the ark of the Lord. Then the priests and the Levites, the tent, bought the tent of meeting and all the holy vessels that was in that tent. This is what Moses and Joshua in the wilderness talked to the Creator. And meanwhile, King Solomon and the whole community, calm and unity of Israel, who were assembled with him before the ark, were sacrificing sheep and oxen in such abundance that they could not be numbered and counting. Sacrificing they was not doing. Sacrament, giving thanks to the Creator <clears throat> for <clears throat> what he had given them. There's no such thing as sacrifice. The priest brought the Ark of Covenant, the place under the wings of the cherubim, in the shrine of the holy house, and the holy of holies. For the cherubim had their wings spread out over the place of the Ark, so that the cherubim shielded the Ark and its poles from above. The poles projected so that the, this is the building. There was nothing inside the Ark when the priest came out of the sanctuary for the cloud that filled the house of the Lord. The priests were not able to remain and perform the service because the cloud of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Now, they was just out here burning and sacrificing sheep at a number that it couldn't be counted. And it's saying it was a cloud of smoke. Of course it was. It was that cloud of smoke. See, I read in between the lines. I don't give a shit about some cloud of smoke. The instruction of the creator is why we focused on here. This is a remarkable story. Could be in 300, but is it consequential? No, it's not. Nobody gives a fuck about the smoke. We're supposed to carry out the order of our creator, right? And I'm not dissing. I'm just cutting through the bullshit. Cutting through the fat. 
Then Solomon declared, the Lord is cho chosen to abide in a thick cloud. That's not what God said. I've now built for you. You know what I'm saying? See, Solomon's a wise man, but Solomon's not God. And you have to be able to dissect these fuckers too, or he's still a man. And you'll end up doing what Solomon did, and God didn't command Solomon to do a lot of shit. I have now built for you a stately house, a place where you may dwell forever. Then the whole congregation of Israel standing, the king faced about and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. King of God is able to bless if you keep in the word of God. Die. The king is a Messiah God. And he has at his time, at his hand, at his disposal, all times, um, a judge or a prophet or somebody that's to speak to him. You know, speak the word of God. Isaiah was with King Amos. David had Nathan and so forth and so on, right? He said, praise be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has fulfilled with these the promise he made to be promise he made to my father David for he said ever since I brought my people Israel Israel a lot of Egypt I have not chosen a city among all the tribes of Israel for building a house all the tribes one house how many churches y'all got ever since I brought my people Israel out of Egypt I have not chosen a city among all the tribes of Israel for building a house to where my name might abide. But I have chosen David to rule my people. David, the bloodline of David. Not David in the flesh, no resurrection. Shout out the dumbass Hebrews. No resurrection, Jack. Just the line. Now my father David had intended to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, as regards to your intention to build a house for my name, you have done right. To have that intention however you shall not build the house yourself instead your son the issue of your loins shall build the house of my name and the lord has fulfilled the promise that he made i've succeeded my father david and i have ascended to the throne of israel as the lord promised i have built the house for the name of the lord the god of israel i have set a place there for the ark containing the covenant which the lord made with our fathers when he brought them out of egypt then solomon stood but for the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole community of Israel, he spread the palms towards his heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel in heavens above and on the earth below, there is no God like you who keep your gracious covenant with your servants when they walk before you and before you in wholehearted devotion. You who have kept the promises you made to your servant, my father, David, fulfilling the deeds, the promise that you made. As is now the case. And O Lord God Israel, keep further the promise you made to your servant, my father David. Your line on the throne of Israel shall never end. If only your descendants will look to their way and walk before me as you have walked before me. It's a, it's a stipulation, David, walking in that way. But if you don't walk in that way, the promise is that an ass going to get whooped. Now, therefore, God of Israel, let the promise that you made to your servant, my father, be fulfilled. But will God really dwell on earth? Even the heavens to their uttermost reaches cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. Yet turn, O Lord, my God, to the prayer and supplication of your servant. Hear the cry of prayer which your servant offers before you this day. This is significant in praying to the east. May your eyes be open day and night towards this house, towards the place of which you have said, my name shall abide there. You heed the prayers which your servants will offer towards this place. And when you hear the supplication to which your servants and your people, Israel, offer towards this place, give heed in your heavenly abode. Give heed and pardon. Whenever one man commits offense against another and the latter utters an imprecation, to bring a curse upon him and comes with his imprecation before your altar in this house, oh, here in heaven and take action to judge your servants, condemning him as who is in the wrong, bringing down the punishment of his conduct on his head, vindicating him who is in the right by rewarding him according to his righteousness. The house of God is the house of judgment. You pray in that direction for supplication and something else. Should your people Israel be routed by an enemy because they have sinned against you? Y'all hear that? Should your, should your P 
people Israel be routed by enemy because they sinned against you? Slavery. Is that white people's fault? Or did black people sin against the creator and then get routed? It's a GPS. So when I say it's no racism, systemic or otherwise, and if you say anything about that, it's in direct contrast that you believing in God. I don't care what your grandmom, your grandpa, white liberals, black liberals, whoever. I don't care what they say. I don't need y'all to validate my belief in the creator. Or not even belief. Because it's not a belief at this point. Y'all see me walking it out and see it working in real time. Should your people Israel be routed by an enemy because they have sinned against you? And then they turn back to you and, and acknowledge your name. And they offer prayer and supplication to you in this house. Oh, hear in heaven and pardon the sin of your people Israel and restore them to the land that you gave to their fathers. Should the heavens be shut up and there be no rain because they have sinned against you? Because they have sinned against you. Not just because God want to kill. Not just because he wanted to be a drought. No, because you have sinned against him. It's never first strike from God. He created us and all, all the land for us. The Garden of Eden. Why did Adam get kicked out of it? Some he did. I bet he blamed God for it. You man, it's systemic racism. They don't want a nigga to do shit. You wasn't a nigga, Adam, until you ate off that goddamn tree, nickel. Should the heavens be shut up and there be no rain because they have sinned against you and then they pray towards this place and acknowledge your name and repent of their sins when you answer them, oh, here in heaven and pardon the sin of your servant, your people, Israel, after you have shown them the proper way in which they are to walk and send down rain upon the land, which you gave to your people as their heritage. Y'all know how to walk in the creator's walk? When you do, he'll pour down that rain on you. Not in symbolism, but you can use it in symbolism either. Um, too, I'm sorry, as well. So too, if there's a famine in the land, if there's pestilence, blight, mildew, locusts, caterpillars, if an enemy oppresses them in any of the settlements of the land, in any plague, in any disease, shout out to COVID, in any prayer supplication offered by any person among all of you, each of whom knows his own affliction when he spreads his palm towards this house, accountability. Oh, here in your heavenly abode and pardon, take action, render to each man according to his ways, as you know his heart to be. You alone know the hearts of all men. You're not going to run, y'all. You can hate me all you want. You're not going to deal with it. It's the creator's foot that's going to be in your ass. And it's a variety of ways that he put his foot in your ass. Some of it's actual death. Some of it's cutting you off from the living. You feel like you're missing out on shit. You can't get up. You can't quite keep up with everybody else. Yeah, that's God fucking you up. Or if a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel comes from a different land for the sake of your name, for they shall hear about your great name and your mighty hand, your outstretched arm, when he comes to pray towards this house. Oh, here in your heavenly abode and grant all that foreigner ask you for. Thus all the peoples of the earth will know your name and revere you, as does your people Israel, and they will recognize that your name is attached to this house that I built. Now get it? King Solomon, it's amazing that he would say this and then he would switch over. He He's given the okay in front of all Israel for strangers to be able to walk this way. What did the Jews say? They was the chosen people. When your people take the field against their enemy by whatever way you send them and they pray to the Lord in the direction of the city which you have chosen, and the house Israel, which I built in your name, oh, here in heaven, pray, pray, oh, here in heaven, their prayer and supplication and uphold their cause. First Kings 8 and 46, when they sin against you, for there is no man who does not sin, and you are angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and their captives carry them off to an enemy land near or far, and they take it to their heart in the land which they have been carried off. And they repent and make supplication to you in that land of their captors, saying, We have sinned, we have acted perversely, we have acted wickedly. And they turn back to you with all their heart and soul in that land of the enemies who have carried them off. And they pray to you in the direction 
of that land that you gave to the fathers of that city, which you have, which you have chosen, and to the house which I have built to your name, O oh, give heed in your heavenly abode to their prayer and supplication and uphold their cause. No Jesus needed. Praying to the east, Islam, to the east, my brother, to the east, right? This is Islam. They wasn't called Muslims. This is the same order. And first, second, sir, 122, third, sir, 84, supported wholeheartedly. They make no distinction. They understand who Musa was, Moshe. They get it. And just like the Christianity, though, they talk about Jesus and it's unacceptable, y'all. Like, a Jesus is totally unacceptable. Um, I don't study Muhammad. I don't need to. I study the creator. His attributes is one of these. Me, 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 me. It can't not be about Moshe, not be about Abraham, not be about Isaiah, not be about Jeremiah, not be about Amos, not be about any of them, and then be about Muhammad and Jesus. They had no work. You know, there's never been a prophet like unto Moshe. Moses, Abraham, Ibrahim is the one that the covenant was made with. Ibrahim's firstborn son. What's his name? You can't just wipe Ishmael out. You can't. You can't just do that. I'm, I'm not. So it's going to be problems with me and a lot of people. But it's going to be problems on behalf of God. And y'all gonna lose, you know? Questioning people that don't know shit is how you find it out. And like at the beginning of this, Thomas Sowell, right? They give you their intellectuals. Intellectuals don't mean intelligence. Intellectuals is no end result. Is if they wrong about it, it's oh well and keep on moving, right? You got intellectuals that's talking about COVID. It's a catastrophe, but they don't pay a price because it was just the idea. And they can change their ideas whenever they want. Law don't change. No matter how I feel about something, once I say I stand on law, this law is what you judge me by. Don't matter that it's raining, the law is the same. Don't matter that it's sunny, the law is the same. I can't have a bad day and say, oh, this day, I'm not going to keep the law because it's too cold. That's who y'all are emotionally as people. I wanted to talk about more about blacks, but it just it went to this place. And it was pretty good that it went to this place, you know, so I'm going to get off here now. And I'll be back later, y'all. Um, we one day away from the Sabbath, and I still keep the Sabbath as well because nobody can stop me. So when I say Shalom Aleichem, um, that's my olive branch to... People may consider themselves Israel and people that's Ishmael. Me, myself, I identify with Ishmael because it never changed. You know, you had a couple people that came through at one time, what they call the age of ignorance. But Ibrahim wasn't Muslim. He didn't say that. He wasn't. They called him Abraham the Hebrew. Hebrew generically is the crossover. Abraham was a Chaldean. You know, that was his nationality. Hebrew is not a nationality. It's never been. Um, and you had these people with the Khazars, the Turks, that took up Judaism, came in touch with the tribe of Judah, and they took their practices. You know, they started doing the religious practices, which you see the Jews keep today. Practices of religion. When the creator said, I hate, I despise your feast days, I have to take that to heart. I don't care that you're a rabbi, a Moffat. I don't care about your titles. It means nothing to me. You know, I'd be bowing down to a man if I bow down to your title. Clearly, I hate, I despise your feast days. That applies. And I don't need some man to try to tell me as a man what context it means to take a shit or take a leap. So don't try to tell me about the context of God. Y'all talk about it to keep people under you. I talk about the word of God to keep people righteous, to keep people under God, to understand why this punishment might go down, to understand what's happening. And you can see it as clear as day right now. We in a great reveal, a reveal, right? You got everybody talking about racism, systemic racism. It's showing itself not to be true. The LGBT, um, the evil doing battle with, with itself. You got Dave Chappelle 
showing them who they are. Critical race theory. I saw an LGBT person in a school board meeting reading from a book that the school board said was okay for the curriculum for children. The shit got so explicit, the school board said, hey, you can't read that in here, that's inappropriate. And like, yeah, but this is what, this is what you're teaching our kids. I believe the children are future. That shit was in the 70s. It's finally coming to fruition. And everything has to move in the time that the creed has it ordained for. But I do know we're not going back to what was. When 2024 get here, it's going to be a new day. It's going to be completely different. And not because anything but the word of God is going to be played out. And now... Now, with this reveal, people like, damn, if we don't have rights that God gave us, we don't have no rights because these people in power say whatever the fuck they want to do. And if we can't prove it, then it's law. It don't even matter that they telling a lie. Y'all know I don't do the driver's license thing, the taxes thing. And I had to fight these motherfuckers for rights that God gave us. And any of these people that, that, that's in these title positions. I don't deal with them in their titles. I deal with them as men and women. I don't give a fuck who you are, president, policeman. These are titles that you give yourself. You as a man, you ain't taking shit from me, man. Fuck you. And to people that rob and kill and shit like that on the streets, y'all weak as shit too because... Whatever your situation is, your poverty, that's yours to deal with, chief. You know, but you're going to make it somebody else's issue because you're too fucking weak to, to walk in your steps. And most of you, your parents did that shit. You like a systemic racism or systemic. But it's not racism. It's sexually irresponsibility that's systemic. And most people don't want to admit it because most of us black have been sexually irresponsible. Some of us paid prices for it. Some of us got by. But in general, it's, it's just being sexually irresponsible. If you're not ready to have a baby, to be a mom or dad, then you should make sure you take precautions against that. You don't just roll the dice with a baby and say, okay. And then single moms and single dads, that's not the way. People don't want the truth because they hide near fuck-ups, but it don't end up affecting you. The child is coming, and each generation doubles down on that stupid shit. That's the reason, that's the only reason that black people stay where they at. You sexually irresponsible. If you born under the poverty line, you're a young adult. Why wouldn't you tighten your shit up and give that kid an environment that he don't have to grow up seeing this, seeing that, hooked on drugs. You can't control where you live at, but you can control where your kids live at. And it's been a cop out. And... I'm a dad. Munch is a mom. We was afforded the, the same shit everybody else was afforded. And we can see now it's not about race. It's been more white people complaining about this government than anything else now. Because y'all, like, they didn't care when it was black people. Why should they care? They didn't have your kids. The fuck, I don't even care that it's black people. I don't. It's not my business. I don't give a shit about black people. I care about righteous people. You calling yourself black don't cut no grass with me. It don't it don't cut any grass. Like if it's not the word of God, it's not honorable, you know, and, and I don't mean that in a religious sense, but your accolades. Uh, 81 points of basketball game. Just don't give a fuck. Cuts no grass with the creator. Can't keep a bullet off my ass if the creator say, bullet hit this nigga. And I don't mean in a that kind of sense. But me being in a place and stray bullets come through and take me out of here. The creator, the creator don't put me in those situations. Why would he? I keep his order. You know, I'm accountable. 
And if you a man, you should be that. Your parents put you in a situation where you you behind and you don't have, you deal with that. Don't rob, don't steal. That's tough. That's what a man is. All of us been through it. Shit, I come from Park Heights. My family was fucked up. Drugs right there. And I, I even hate talking about it because it's a fucking cop out. Father died a junkie. My favorite uncle died a junkie. Both of these niggas kidney failure. And they was like that. Getting fucking high together. Didn't make it out of their 40s, man. They ain't bring me down. I ain't want to be those niggas. My eyes work. My brain work. I wasn't that emotional that... Nah. Shout out to them motherfuckers, but I don't want to be them. You know, they were people that had fucked up behaviors. Uncle or dad, these two niggas had fucked up behavior. I don't have to be emotional, damn, man. Like, fuck y'all, man. That's what's wrong. Do what's right. How, however it feel, do what's right. Pass that on to your kids, man. Pass that shit on. That's what you need to do. Pass on law. Pass on stuff that's consequential. I dig what I'm saying? Don't pass off intellectual shit because it don't mean anything. I'm telling y'all, it's checkers. If you can't put your hands on it, you can't use it. We can ponder and wonder all day long, and you'll be in the same spot 10 years from now. So about to break out, y'all. Shalom. Islam. Shalom alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Shout out to Henry for the subscription. And um, shout out to Sister Jackie, Sister Crystal, Sister Ali. We'll discuss the name thing later. Um, Sis Lo, Jessica Martin, a lot of love. Nephew Jarrell, appreciate you. OGP, little brother, Brennan. Dolo, J, Dr. Chu, OGP, my man Eric Harper over at the Love Brand. Shout out to, shout out to E. Am I missing anybody, y'all? Uh, I hope not. Hope I'm not. If I missed you, hit me in the comments. I shout you out at the next video. Peace, y'all. I'm out.